This episode's kind of boring. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 43rd episode of the show, Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 248th episode overall, titled Parts and Parcels. We begin this episode with Bulk and Skull working as package delivery boys, arriving at the youth center. TJ and Cassie are there, and TJ says that he admires Bulk and Skull for always working, but Cassie points out how it's never the same job twice. Sick burn. Bulk and Skull deliver a package for Stone, who is expecting a blender that he ordered. He opens the box to find no blender, and Bulk and Skull say that the daytime thief has struck again. Apparently, a lot of their packages are empty, and Bulk and Skull rip open packages to see that stuff is missing. Skull explains that their boss thinks that they're stealing the stuff, and they could just get arrested. TJ then mentions how Bulk and Skull aren't thieves, so he's going to help them. He walks over, saying that if the daytime thief has struck so many times, he'll do it again. They need to do a stakeout, and they do a dumb handshake. So this is how we go out. Outside, Bulk, Skull, and TJ walk around in all black going into a warehouse. They walk around surrounded by wooden crates. Bulk and Skull get into a big crate on their own, and TJ scales a bunch of boxes and whatnot. I guess this is where all the packages are kept. TJ sits down saying, now they wait. Sometime later, Bulk and Skull come out to ask TJ if he wants to go get food for them, which TJ says he'll go do. He leaves and Bulk and Skull talk about how they're all alone now. On the moon, Rygog says that the Zords are almost done. We see Divatox screaming at them and Porto says that they're putting the finishing touches on the remote control and apparently Rygog is going to use his remote control to use all three evil Zords at once. TJ is coming back to the warehouse with food but his communicator goes off. He talks to Alpha who says Parantrons are attacking downtown. He says to have Ashley and Carlos meet him at the courthouse. He puts down the food leaving. Bulk and Skull then fight over who should go check on TJ and then they eventually look out and they see that the door just closed so they continue to hide. We see a shadow. Outside, Ashley, Carlos, and TJ are spotting some Piranatrons from around a corner, but then, just when they think that they're hidden, they get jumped by even more Piranatrons, which turns into a cool fight that shows off that Carlos has actually learned to fight a bit. The Piranatrons then steal a phone booth, leaving. Remember when those were a thing? TJ heads back out for his stakeout. He arrives at the warehouse and everything is ransacked, and he checks on Bulk and Skull, who saw nothing because they were terrified in the wooden crate. TJ says forget it, they'll just have to try again. At the youth center, Ashley and Cassie have put makeup on Skull and dressed him in drag for some reason. Justin and Carlos are also helping with the packages. They're about to roll out for the stakeout. Skull is an old woman is in the front yard of someone's house trimming the bushes. Also, TJ talks to Justin, who is set a bit further away, and the others are in Ashley's car. Bulk comes in to deliver a package driving the truck. He stops at Skull's house getting ready to deliver the package and Skull speaks in the exact same voice that he did in the Song of Guitardo way back in season two. Then Skull tries to take the opportunity to just slap Bulk for absolutely no reason. TJ tells him to stall by delivering some packages to the next house. Bulk walks across the street and then Parantrons show up going into the back of the truck. They start going through the stuff and TJ tells everyone to stand by. They're the daytime thief. They make a noise and Skull goes over looking screaming. He falls onto the ground panicking and here comes Bull coming to Skull's rescue. TJ then tells him to run away and he leads them away. The others park in front of them, jumping over, taking on the Piranatron. But some got through and are still following the others. TJ has them hide behind a dumpster and they run right past, still looking for them. Skull then points out that they can't say that monsters stole the packages, but TJ just opens the package in front of them and he sees computer supplies. He tells Bulk and Skull to meet him at the youth center in two hours. The others defeat the Piranatrons and say they have to get back to the power chamber. Meanwhile, TJ's already heading there, talking about how it's a lot of phone parts, electronics, etc. that have been stolen. They're trying to figure out why Divatox would want this, and Justin suggests that she's building something. Poro then directs some Piranatrons to places while he makes sure that the remote controls still work. Also, Divatox almost falls off of her balcony. He says that the Cat Zord is ready to go, and Divatox commands that they move out to kill the Rangers. The Cat Zord takes off. Alpha then tells the others that the computer indicates that Divatox is using the parts to make a remote control to control her Zords. Seriously, what the fuck? How would they know that? Then the alarms go off because of the Cat Zord, so it's time to shift into Turbo. The Rangers show up, and they see the Cat Zord is being piloted by Rygog. Why was there even remote controls? Then, the Blue Centurion is just dragging the dead body of the Shark Zord because apparently they just left it there last time, and it comes back to life, knocking the Robo Racer down. Then the Hawk Zord comes flying in from space, so the Rangers call their rescue Zords, going into high stance mode. The Rangers and the Blue Centurion go forward, fighting off the three Zords, but they are getting attacked pretty easily here. The three Zords put their power together, taking down the Rangers. Then, on the space base, Porto suggests not going to full strength, and Divatox order Rygog to power up, and the Cat Zord sparks. And now, the Rangers somehow steal his power. I don't know how that worked at all. They just scream that they're going to steal all the power, and then color-coded lights come on and hit their individual Zords. This was a terrible way to explain Japanese footage. The Rangers then come together to form the Rescue Megazord, and TJ leaves, coming back with the Turbo Megazord. They then call out Artillery Power, which is now being used by both Rescue and Turbo. Turbo fires at the Hawk Zord, blowing it up. Then Rescue blows up the Shark Zord. Then they fire again, this time with the Rescue Megazord, while the Turbo Megazord does its spin-out attack, and the combination blows up the Cat Zord. That was incredibly lame and boring. 
Rygog arrives back on the space base and Deep Talk screams about how he had three Zords and he still failed. Deep Talk proclaims she'll win no matter what. At the youth center, Bulk and Skull are in disguise at the bar, and then their boss and cops come in, demanding that they are arrested. Bulk and Skull then explain the truth that the packages were actually stolen by alien creatures, but no, they don't believe them. Then, the freaking Power Rangers show up in the youth center. I don't think we've ever seen any ranger suits on this set before. TJ explains the truth and he tells Bulk and Skull how great they are leaving. After they leave, TJ walks in unmorphed and Bulk and Skull say how they just got their job saved by the Power Rangers and now they want raises. As they're leaving, Bulk tells Cassie and Ashley that TJ's a really good guy. And they say that he said the same thing about Bulk and Skull, which turns into Bulk hugging and freaking out about TJ, much to TJ's confusion. The end. For some reason, I feel like this episode is like revered in the Power Ranger fandom as like peak Bulk and Skull or something. I just feel like I've heard so much about what a great episode this is and how it shows how great the second half of Turbo is. And to those people, I say, what? Where? I think this episode was perfectly fine, but the thing I've noticed in these last few episodes is they really have no idea what the hell to do with the Japanese footage. They have to keep inventing weird, stupid ways that things get resolved because they don't want to or can't use whatever the reasoning was in the Japanese footage. So we get weird things like them suddenly stealing the power from the Cat Zord, or how the Shark Zord's body was just there, being dragged away by Robo Racer. I mean, the Blue Centurion even says a line about how Deep Talks needs to clean up her trash. But seriously, does that mean that the Power Rangers just left a giant robot in the city for a week or something? That's insane. Speaking of insane, we're actually going to begin the two-part season finale of Power Rangers Turbo next time. Yeah, I know, it's hard to believe, but we're already wrapping up season five of Power Rangers. Find out how it goes next time, but until then, may the power protect you.